Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo Academy, the show where we teach you how to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So if you want to get that, make sure you stay until the end. Also, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, make sure that you jump into the description, click on the link there and download the sample files. Also, if you do not own Luminar Neo, make sure you use the link in the description together with the discount code so you can get the best deal on your new purchase. And finally, we would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In this episode, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about HDR photography. To celebrate the release of Luminar's HDR Merge plugin, we have prepared a three episode mini series focusing on HDR photography. In this first episode, we're going to cover everything you need to know about HDR photography to make sure that you are up to speed when we're going to be heading out and photographing it in episode number two. So now we have everything ready, so let's jump in a computer and start. So as you can see, we are back in the studio where we're going to be talking about HDR photography. Now, just a quick reminder, our Luminar Neo Power Bundle now includes two new collections of presets specifically for HDR photography. If you already own the bundle, you can download them now. And if you haven't purchased it yet, make sure you check out the bundle on our website, cleverphotographer.com. Now, HDR brings out the deepest shadows and the brightest highlights of a scene. This tool is useful for outdoor locations and interior real estate images, but it can also add a fantasy element to creative photo manipulation. Now, the problem is with HDR photography that it's often overdone, especially during the photo editing. But what is actually HDR? Well, the HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. And in photography, it's the method of merging images to create a final photo. The method involves taking many pictures and then stitching them together. Each image captures the scene of different exposures. When merged, the picture provides an overall correct exposure. So let's have a look at this first example we have here. If you would shot it with the camera, you would only get this middle exposure. Now, when we make it bigger, you can see that some parts are too dark and the parts outside are completely overexposed and you can see only very little details. You also get this really bright glow out of it. So to avoid this, you would make it three shots. So you have your middle shots, which is this one right here, where we're looking for the mid-tones. Then you take your bright shot, where you're exposing for the details in the shadows. And as you can see on the image, all the dark parts, we can see all the details, all the textures and everything. And then finally, we take the third shot where we're looking for the details in the highlights. And that's the windows and the doors in this case. So now we have three of these images. We have our mid-tones, we have our shadows, and we have our highlights. And when we combine them together, we get a result like this. Now, of course, it's up to you when it comes to editing on how the result is going to look. However, this is a great way of how you can create a scene that is more like something that the human eye can see. Now, how do you do this? Again, coming back to the how you make an HDR photography. Now, in most cases, this process need at least three images. So the first one is always about capturing a mid-range exposure shot, just as you've seen. Meanwhile, the second meters for the highlights and the third for the shadows. Or even more, you can have a five, seven, nine. It really is up to you and it depends on how complex is the situation. Now your camera allows you to capture three images like this in a manual mode where you can actually adjust the shutter speed and have the zero and then overexposed and underexposed image. Or you can use something that is called bracketing. Now some other cameras even have a dedicated HDR feature that lets you freely adjust the setting. Now while we're here, let's talk about the bracketing just very quickly. Now most of the current cameras have the bracketing built in. And really, it's a technique where a photographer takes shots of the same image using different camera settings. 
This gives photographer multiple variation of the same image to choose from or combine to ensure that they get the perfect shot. So this can be used for two reasons. One is for our HDR photography, where we have the details in our midtones, then in our highlights and in our shadows, or you could use the bracketing just to make sure that you have a selection of exposures to choose from when you're gonna start your editing and to avoid that you end up with overexposed or underexposed image. So now we talk about what is an HDR photography and we very lightly touched on how to capture it. But don't worry, in the episode number two, we will be focusing on how to capture images for the HDR photography and I will take you directly to the location where we're gonna be doing it. But now let's talk about when would you use HDR photography? Well, there are a number of situations where HDR photography can come in handy when used well. Some of these include interior photography, nightscapes, dramatic skies, sunrise and sunset, and so on. So now let's have a look at some of the examples. So starting with the sunset and dramatic skies. So for example, this one, uh, that's a great example where obviously the dynamic range is huge here. You have these lights, which bring certain amount of exposure. Then you have the dramatic sky. You have all the details and texture on the image. And to bring it all together, the HDR photography is a great tool. Now, moving on, another really complex scene. You're having long exposure right here from the cars. Then you have a light inside of the cathedral. Then you have a light inside of the houses and the street lamps. And to add to it, you have this really dramatic sky. So a lot's happening for the camera to capture. And HDR photography, when done right, can really help to capture all of this together. Let's see another example again, this one, for example, here we're talking again about long exposure on the river, then lots of lovely details on the town or city, and again, another epic, dramatic purple sky. So to bring it all together, HDR photography can help a lot. So this is how you would use HDR photography for sunset, sunrise, and dramatic skies. Now let's talk about the nightscape. Let's have a look at some examples here. So for example, this image right here, as you can see, lots of sources of light, kind of complex sky, lots of shadows, highlights, moving water. And to bring it all together, the HDR is a great choice to make sure that we get details everywhere. So that's one. Another nightscape image, for example, right here, as you can see, lots happening here. And to capture the details under the bridge, over the city, in the sky, with the lights, with that level of details and texture, HDR photography is a great choice. And maybe one more right here. Again, very complex scene. You can see all the details on the foreground with the water and the texture. Then with the light reflecting in the water with a little bit of long exposure. Again, lots of details under the bridge with some movement and low exposure created from the cars. Just very, very pretty scene. So that's a nightscape. So sunset and dramatic skies, nightscape and interior design. Interior design is a little bit similar to the first example I showed you. So again, the idea here is that you use the HDR technique to make sure that you have a good level of exposure on the interior as well as the exterior. When you're gonna be renting this place or selling it, you really wanna sell the whole experience, the view from the bathroom, and the use of HDR can really help with this. Let's go out, let's have a look at another one. So again, similarly on this image, you're trying to sell the idea of having the bathroom with the view on the pool. Looking at the image, you can see how much darker it is. It probably also has a different white balance compared to outside. And here you would probably use something like three, five, or even seven shots to put it together to make sure that you can create an experience where people really can see that while you're using your bathroom, you're really just by the pool and really sell the idea. And to finish it off, let's have a look at this one. Another complex image, of course, completely different light inside with a lots of foliage outside. And again, the idea would be to sell the fact that you would be having a bath and you would be surrounded by the greens and the HDR would work very well here. So once again, you don't have to be limited by these photography styles. However, they are good starting point when you're thinking about when to use the HDR photography. Now, when it comes to HDR photography, I mentioned on the beginning that when it's not used well or when it's overdone, it's not very appealing. So I wanna talk to you about some of the common HDR issues. So for that, we're gonna open another set of examples here. And first, let's talk about 
flattening your image. An HDR image contains a huge amount of data that can be extracted. Dark areas can be brightened up quite a lot to reveal the smallest details. However, this doesn't mean that you have to do it. The amount of details you show across the scene is only one aspect of a good photo. Contrast is the other part. Flattening the image by reducing the contrast between the original bright and dark areas is often a bad practice. It makes the image look less natural, difficult to understand, and not really appealing. So again, let's have a look at the example. So I'm right here, and this is the image when it comes out. Now, when you bring the details out of your shadows, when you bring the details out of your highlights, you will get a result like this, which can look quite flat. Now, when you bring it back and make sure that the setting is right, the result should be something like this and much more natural. So you get a really nice contrast and really nice difference between the darker and the brighter parts of your image. Now, moving on another issue, and that's the black clouds. Another common HDR mistake in a landscape photography is to allow the clouds to go black, just like in this case right here. They can get really dark, they can get even darker than this, and that's really, again, to do with the heavy post-processing. Now, when you keep an eye on it and making sure that it's nicely edited, you can still get a nice, natural, fluffy effect. Finally, the third and probably the most common mistake and issue with the HDR photography, and that's the halos. Now let's open the example and let's talk about it. Halos around highly contrasted edges are the first indicator that you have overprocessed your image. This is usually done by boosting the contrast and clarity too much. When you really overdo it, you will get a result like this, where you can see the halo over the trees, also over the tower here. And when you careful and when you pay attention to the details, you can get a result like this. So really, it's important to keep an eye on your contrast, on your clarity and the level of editing to avoid result like this. So again, let's run through the common HDR issues. First is the flattening of your image. That's when you open the shadows too much and you lose some of the contrast. After that, the dark skies. Again, they can get much darker than this. However, they will look overprocessed and unnatural. And finally, the most common mistakes in HDR photography, which is the halos. Traditionally created by pushing your contrast and clarity too high, but in overall, this is a sign of well overprocessed image. To avoid all of those, we suggest you a more gentle approach to editing, which will make a more pleasant image. Now, sometimes it's good to get inspired by other photographers and to see how a proper HDR editing is made. The first one is Trey Redcliffe, which is generally recognized as the father of HDR photography. I will put the links to each of the photographer in the video so you can follow them and see more of their work. The second photographer is a Tim Clark, also very well worth following. And finally, also Alan Fulmer is a great HDR photographer and has some incredible landscape shots that are definitely worth seeing. So this is the end of our first episode where we were looking at HDR photography. We talk about what it stands for, what it is, how it is captured. We also look at some examples. And finally, we also look at some common mistakes and discovered some photographers that are worth following. So tomorrow in the episode number two, we will be heading into the location where I tell you what gear you're going to need, how to set it up, and how to get the best possible images for your HDR photos. And now it's time to get your gift. If you want to get access to our Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, all you need to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminar gift. And there you can download the cheat sheet and start to use it right away. And there you have it. So I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share our video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.